Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for calling this hearing, which I think is extremely important. We are, I think it's time we admitted, in the middle of a technological arms race with China. And I think it's important to underscore that China is not just one threat among many. China is the national security threat facing this country now and perhaps for many, many years to come. And uh, we are in many ways at a serious disadvantage. I was struck by something you said, Director Krebs, that uh, really it's only in the last two years that we have woken up to across this government the serious security threat that China poses to us across a, a range of fronts. And we are making up for lost time. And one area where we're making up for lost time is I think too many U.S. companies have been unthinkingly transferring sensitive technology to China. And then that technology ends up in the hands of the Chinese government and the Chinese military. And this simply has to stop, which is why this morning I've introduced the China Technology Transfer Control Act, which calls for placing China's core technologies on the Commerce Department's export control list and for sanctions on foreign entities and individuals who help U.S. businesses skirt these export controls. Uh, we need to stop fighting yesterday's war when it comes to getting at not only how China steals U.S. technology, but also American ideas and American innovation. And this truly is, I think, the next frontier in our fight for our national security. Uh, Ambassador, let me just invite you to comment on, on efforts like this. What more do we need to do to make sure that our most sensitive technology does not end up in the hands of the Chinese military? Well, um, I, I think there, your legislation seems to be hitting in an area where we're very concerned and thinking very carefully about that. And you might be aware that under the, um, the previous law, the Export Control Reform Act, Congress directed the Commerce Department to conduct a process which started last November to look at dual-use technologies that are important to our national security and consider whether export control regulations should apply to them. So that process is continuing. I think it's something that we really need to, to focus on. Of course, we want to make sure that technology is available for our companies to be able to innovate wherever they want to do so around the globe, but we also don't want to see it in the hands of authoritarian governments or nation states that want to take that technology and, and move it to government uh, facilitated uh, ends. So I think we got to look very closely at that. Director, do you want to add to that at all? Do you have other thoughts? I, I think that's right. I think, uh, you know, as we look at China, um, and this, these are not my words, they're one of a, um, a um, pretty significant investor, but companies are increasingly have to understand that China is probably three things. One, it's an opportunity, it's a market. They can go in and they can sell something in that market. Two is a partner. They can do R&D, they can do technology development. And the third is, simply put it, they're a threat. Strategic threat from stealing IP, forced technology transfer. Uh, I think on the first one is the opportunity. Companies are starting to come to grips with that market's not what they thought it was, that market is not what they were told it was, principally because in China, you're only as successful as the government lets you be, and as soon as you're no longer of use to them, then they tamp down and you're out. On the partner side, that's, I think, where there's a lot of, a lot of the concern I have. Universities are a great example of shared R&D partnerships, sensitive technologies that are being developed uh, collaboratively. We've talked about AI and big data. You know, these tools are being taken back to China and allowing them to implement a form of digital authoritarianism. That is simply not congruent with our values as a democracy. And increasingly, I think that's where we're going. We're seeing companies that are looking at markets through the lens of are they a, uh, an autocratic authoritarian state or are they a democracy? I can play ball in one, but I can't in the other. You know, you, you make a fantastic point uh, about digital authoritarianism. China has built the most unbelievably perfect authoritarian regime in many ways that the world has ever seen. It's horrifying. And, uh, and when it comes to markets, I think we need to send the signal to American companies that they have a choice to make when they think of China as a market, that there is no just going into China and investing and sharing technologies with Chinese companies and thinking that that's not somehow going to benefit the authoritarian Chinese state. It is going to benefit the authoritarian Chinese state. It is going to reinforce the Chinese military. It is going to be, th those technologies are going to be weaponized quite literally and American companies, I think, have to make a choice about uh, where their loyalties lie. Is it with the free and open international system? Is it with American security? Or is it, uh, is it with what China is trying to do? L let me just ask you this in, in the short time that we have uh, remaining. Director, let me just start with you. Uh, let's go back to the threat that, that Huawei, ZTE pose. What opportunities for cyber espionage and cyber attacks might be made available to China in a country that would rely on telecommunications equipment from Huawei or ZTE? So three quick things. Uh, as the Huawei Oversight Board report describes, the quality of the engineering is not great, and so there are a number of vulnerabilities that are left open on the box. So China and other capable actors 
Russia, Iran, North Korea, others could exploit vulnerabilities on the box. So that's, that's one. The second is the update process. Uh, the ranking member already talked about pushing updates. Uh, if that update comes directly from mainland China, that is potentially a problem given the, uh, the oversight. And third is the way they uh, manage this equipment tends to be by shipping out uh, Chinese nationals to the host country uh, for hands-on. So you have a physical insider threat as well. So real quick, uh, three threats. Yeah, thank you very much. And I'll just say finally, uh, in conclusion, Mr. Chairman, I think it's striking that there is no, if I, if I understand correctly, there's no American company that is currently developing the 5G equipment. Is that, is that right? Am I wrong about that, gentlemen? No American company developing this 5G equipment. No American company does the radio part of it. Other companies do the switching and routing and other portions of it. Got it. Uh, I think that's very striking. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.